Okay, it is time for the next installment in my series of videos detailing my own personal handgun collection. And today we're gonna to cover my favorite type of handgun, revolvers. More specifically, revolvers from my favorite revolver manufacturer, Smith & Wesson. Now I've got about 14 of these. I've got 12 here that I can show you. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna start off today with what I think is one of the most important carry guns ever made and one of the most prolific carry guns ever made. That is the Smith & Wesson J-Frame. This is the Smith & Wesson 637 and it holds five rounds of 38 Special plus P. It has a stainless steel cylinder, stainless steel barrel, stainless steel controls, and an aluminum body, which makes it strong, but lightweight and easy to carry. Guns like this one right here, along with cowboy guns like single action armies, are what first started my love affair with guns back when I was a child, first as cap guns, and then later as the real thing when I was an adult. I don't think you can overstate the importance of the J-frame in today's society and in the history of handguns. So this is one of the best ones out there, especially if you're gonna carry it. It's the Smith & Wesson 637. Now the next little J-frame I'll show you here is my Smith & Wesson Model 60. And this J-frame is a 357 Magnum. It holds five rounds of 357 Magnum. Now this is the LDV model, which stands for Leonardo da Vinci. It was inspired by the Da Vinci Code movie. And as you can see here, it has an unfluted cylinder. I don't know if you can see in there, but it also has a serial number that starts with LDV. And those two things together are what distinguish this from other Model 60s. But other than that, it's pretty much just a Smith & Wesson Model 60. J-frame revolvers are a very important part of American history. All the detectives back in the 70s used to carry this type of gun. We'd see them with them every day on TV. This gun is a piece of American culture. And it's still one of the best carry gun options you could ever choose. And this right here is a perfect example of a J-frame. It's my Smith & Wesson Model 60 LDV. Now the next gun I'm gonna show you here is my 357 Magnum Smith & Wesson 686 SSR, which stands for Stock Service Revolver. Now this is a four inch revolver, which holds six rounds of 357 Magnum. Now everyone should have a four inch 357 Magnum to get optimal performance out of the 357 Magnum round. And when I first saw this gun, what drew me to it was this slab side barrel. I really like the slab sides. I like this really sharply undercut lug here. And I like the little peekaboo thing here for the ejector rod. And it does come with some nice specialty grips here with the SSR on it, like I said, for stock service revolver. Now, like I said, if you want to get the most out of the potent 357 Magnum round, you need a four inch revolver. And this, in my mind, is one of the best ones you can get. I just love the looks of it. If you want to have a gun for camping or hiking or working on the farm or the ranch or whatever, this would be a great 357 Magnum to have. It is my Smith & Wesson 686 SSR. The next 357 Magnum I will show you here is my 686 Plus Performance Center Snub Nose. This holds seven rounds of 357 Magnum ammunition and has a two and a half inch barrel. This just might be one of the most perfect carry guns ever made. If you want seven rounds of 357 Magnum in a gun that's easy to conceal, this would be the gun. And you're not just getting a really powerful little gun with seven rounds of 357 Magnum, you're also getting an upgraded trigger since this is a performance center model. So it has the more polished internals. And this oversized grip makes it really easy to hold onto while you're firing it while still not being too hard to conceal. This is just an all around great little gun. It's my Smith & Wesson 686 Plus Performance Center. Now my next 357 Magnum I'm gonna show you here is probably the oldest one in my collection and that is my Model 66. This holds six rounds of 357 Magnum in a very compact little body. Now this is an older Smith from back when they made some of the best guns in the world. As you can see, it does have the hammer on the firing pin here, which is an indication that it's an older gun. There's no internal lock on the gun, and it has a pinned barrel. You really don't get a much better revolver than this. This gun kind of hits that sweet spot between a larger frame gun and a smaller J-frame with less rounds in it, because even though it holds six rounds, it's not much bigger than a J-frame body-wise. It's one of Smith's older frames. This is probably the coolest 357 Magnum I own, but you know, it's not my favorite 357 Magnum I own. That would be this gun. My Smith & Wesson 686 Plus 3-inch. This is seven rounds of 357 Magnum with a 3-inch barrel. 
Now, even though I think this gun is pretty perfect the way it comes from the factory, I did make one change to this gun. I changed out the cylinder release here with an extended cylinder release from Hogue. It just makes it easier to release your cylinder without changing your grip on your gun. So that right there to me on a good size gun you might actually carry is a really great modification. You might also notice that this gun is actually loaded while I'm filming this video. As you can see right there, silver bullets. And the silver bullets are there because this is my werewolf gun. Now, a lot of people might say, well, why don't you unload it for the video? <laughs> yeah, right. And leave myself vulnerable to werewolves. I don't think that's going to happen, but nice try. The Smith & Wesson 686 Plus is probably one of the best all around guns made. In fact, I think it probably could be the best gun ever made. This gun can do it all. It could be a camping gun, a hiking gun, a duty gun, a concealed carry gun. It can be pretty much anything. So this gun right here is one of my favorite guns, period. The Smith & Wesson 686 Plus. Now the next gun I'm going to show you here is my only gun built specifically around the 44 Special Caliber, and that is my Smith & Wesson 624. This is also an older gun, not quite as old as my 66, but as you can see, it does have the firing pin on the hammer and no internal lock on the gun. 44 Special is not that common of a round and it's not even that potent of a round, but this gun is definitely worth having despite that. It's just a beautiful gun. Like I say, it's back from when Smith & Wesson knew how to make revolvers right and make them tight, and they knew how to design a gun that looked good. I mean, look at that tapered barrel, that slanted under lug, the lines of the gun are just beautiful, that raised sight. It's just a beautiful gun. It's a little piece of history and I had to have it. So I bought it and it is by Smith & Wesson 624. Next, I'll start showing you my 44 Magnum revolvers from Smith & Wesson. And the first one here is my 629 Performance Center Snub Nose. This has a two and a half inch barrel and holds six rounds of 44 mag. Now, one little inconsequential feature of this gun that I really like, I want to show by here, is this little peekaboo shroud here for the ejector. I really like that on guns for some reason. Not sure why, but I know I like it. And you'll notice on this gun, I also changed out the cylinder release to the Hogue extended cylinder release. Really like them, especially on the 44 Magnum. Makes it much easier to reach that cylinder release while holding the gun. Now, like I said, this is a performance center gun, so it does have upgraded internals, has a great trigger on it. And this would be a great carry gun. This would be a gun, if you wanted to carry a 44 Magnum, this would be the one I would carry. I wouldn't say it's so much of a woods gun or a camping gun because of the short barrel, but for concealed carry, it's pretty much perfect. And it is my Smith & Wesson Snub Nose 629 Performance Center model. Now the next 44 Magnum I'm gonna show you here is definitely my favorite 44 Magnum, and it's really one of the favorite guns I own, period. It is the Smith & Wesson 629 Carry Comp. And Carry Comp just isn't a cool sounding name. It's actually very descriptive of this gun. This gun was meant to be carried. As you can see here, it has gutter sights on the top. So you got no big sights in the back to snag here when you have to draw your weapon. And it is compensated. As you can see, the barrel here is compensated and the sight is set back. This gun was designed to be carried and used. This gun just isn't a good looking gun. It's also a powerful gun and it is the performance center model. So it does have those upgraded internals, makes it a very easy shooting gun. This is one of the best guns you could ever hope for in my opinion, especially if you're going to do any camping or hiking. This is my Smith & Wesson 629 Carry Comp. Now the next revolver here is my only 45 ACP revolver. It is the Smith & Wesson 625. This is the four inch version. And as you can see here, it is the JM model. And that JM, of course, stands for Jerry Mixelflickelflick. This gun was made to specifications given to them by him on ways to modify a regular 625 to make it the perfect shooting gun. And man, it did work out. The Smith & Wesson 625 JM is an awesome gun. Now, this next gun here is my second largest revolver I own, but it's probably the most abusive gun to shoot that I own. This gun is a beast. Like I say, it's not the biggest caliber, but man, it is a tough gun to shoot. And it is my Smith & Wesson 460 snub nose. It holds five rounds of 460. And like I said, it may not be the biggest caliber handgun I own, but man, it is no slouch. It is a powerful, high pressure, screaming little round. And that round combined with this short barrel makes this gun one of the toughest guns to shoot that I own. It's very abusive. It is the Smith & Wesson 460. Like I say though, this isn't my biggest gun. My biggest gun is my Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum. Now this is the four inch version with the ported barrel and it holds five rounds of 500 Magnum ammunition. This gun is a beast. It is probably one of the biggest, baddest guns on the planet as far as handguns are concerned. 
Now, some people might say, well, what about the Desert Eagles? Those are a big, bad semi-automatic. Well, yeah, they are big and bad for semi-automatics, but they're not as powerful as a 500 Magnum, and they're not reliable. This is actually reliable, so this is a far better gun. And this gun, like I said, is my Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum. So there you have the majority of the Smith & Wesson revolvers I own. Like I say, revolvers are my favorite type of gun, and Smith & Wesson makes my favorite revolvers. And Smith & Wesson is probably my second favorite gun manufacturer, period, right behind Beretta. Now, my next video will show the rest of my revolvers and a couple of semi-autos, because in that video, we'll be showing my Rugers and my Colts.